Welcome back, everyone. We are now on item 10, general public comments. Um, there will be a minute and a half time. will be green for the first minute. Then the light will turn yellow and the bell will ring, indicating you have 30 seconds remaining to wrap up your comments. At one and a half minutes, the light will turn red to indicate that your time is up. And we have our first speaker for general public comment, Mr. Eric Polo followed by Mr. Alva Alvarez, followed by Don Schrader. You can make your way up to the front. <clears throat> Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. I mean, afternoon or night. <laughs> um, the code that I wanna talk about is a code 8-3-3-15 states riding bicycle Bicyclists, and it's a part A, has three parts. Bicyclists shall not ride upon a sidewalk when there is a wide right lane. It does not specify how wide the lane has to be. Uh, often in wide lanes, there are cars parked. Obviously, the cyclists can't jump over them, so they would have to either go on a sidewalk or ride with the cars, which is extremely unsafe. Um, there's another that says bike lane or bike trail adjacent to the direction of travel. Now, I'm not sure exactly how close adjacent means. Now, if you're going from Manal, you know, from like Indian school uh, to say like Manal and Second Street, there is a bike trail you could take, but you know, it's like, uh, like another 15 minute, you know, ride just to get there. So. The point I'm trying to, to get is that uh, riding on the roads is very unsafe and uh, oftentimes these laws, they don't really make sense. They're not clear as when you can ride the bike or when you cannot. And I just like to, you know, a friend of mine almost got hit by a car, almost got killed. And um, I, I just like to have the ability to ride on a sidewalk. Thank you. Councilor Benton. Thanks for uh, speaking, Mr. Polo. Uh, and uh, years back, I can't remember how, when it was exactly, I, uh, by the request of the administration, I sponsored a, some amendments to the traffic code having to do with cycling. And I think we need to take another look at that. I think you raised some important points, and I think it's confusing. Some of the provisions within that traffic code are confusing, counterintuitive. Now, uh, my understanding is that essentially the, the um, scooters, the rental scooters uh, that are being used are, are pretty much, as I understand it, subject to uh, the bicycle code, uh, is that correct? Um, more or less, mas o menos, I guess we have to, to figure that out. But I think you know, now we've got another mode that we've got to figure out the mix with regard to the sidewalks and, and roadway and so forth. So. Uh, I'm, I'm glad you brought it up, and I think we ought to really take, a, take another look at it, maybe uh, <clears throat> working with our traffic engineers and try to come up with something that's going to make sense to, uh, to accommodate that new mode as well as uh, cyclists. I'm a cyclist myself. I'm a, a, I'm a bicycle commuter, but I also ride recreationally, and, and uh, the streets, the, the, the traffic lanes with cars in them are not for everybody. That's the reason we do have some specialized facilities. Like, uh, uh, like the bike boulevards and the um, dedicated lanes, but uh, those don't exist everywhere, and we need to be very clear about how the sidewalks are to be used. So thanks for bringing it to our attention. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Alvarez. They let me in, Mr. Alvarez. What's that? They let me in. <laughs> <laughs> Well, good evening, folks. What I want to say today may upset a lot of people. <clears throat> and all this shooting that's been going on in Albuquerque and other states, when I first came here from New Mexico in 77, I remember that the government had shut down a lot of facilities for the mental uh, people that were 
uh, in these facilities for them being abused and money being stolen. Uh, and now they're out on the street. When you go buy a gun, uh, the seven day uh, 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 period that they give you is just to find out if you are um, um, a convicted felon, have problems with the police, but it doesn't say nothing about being a mental person or having a mental problem. And this is the problem that we're having right now. The other issue that took place with all this shooting, especially in El Paso, Trump was labeling a lot of people, saying a lot of bad things about the Mexicans, saying the bad things about this, telling these congresswomen to go back home where they come from. And this kid even admitted that he was after the Mexicans. And the thing that the law states that if you're within 50 miles from the border, you don't need paperwork, you don't need a permit to come into the United States to spend your money. Just like if I wanted to go to Juarez, if I was within 50 miles of the border, I don't need a permit from my car and I don't need Mexican license. And this is the problem that we're having. Thank you, Mr. Alvarez. Don Schrader. Going once. Judy Young, followed by Dr. Colleen Aikok, followed by Stephanie Lord. Um, can I use the camera? Is that showing? Or it doesn't show? Thank you, thank you. Good evening, President Pena and counselors. Uh, I'd like to address uh, Don Harris's statements that were made on August the 5th after I presented you with the facts of the evidence of the nefarious and illegal actions taken by Don Harris in pushing through his plan to take over Singing Arrow Park. On June the 17th at 11.03, every counselor voted to include Singing Arrow Park in MRA. Now, this is an illegal action, and apparently, uh, from your vote, you assumed that Don Harris was correct in his statements that he made on August the 5th, because you have not passed a bill to rescind that. So the first thing that Don Harris stated was that the permit should be issued for the community center next month. He's talking about the new commu community center of 15,000 square feet. That will be right in the middle of this park that is uh, perimetered by the archaeological site, but the original community center is a dangerous community center that should have been replaced in 2011, 2013. He also stated that that is already in the MRP. Singing Arrow Park was never even mentioned in the MRP at all. When he expanded the MRA to include Singing Arrow Park, he deemed that this park was blighted. This park is not blighted and it's illegal. Every single agency, the MRA agency, the uh, Albuquerque Redevelopment Commission, and the mayor denied including Singing Arrow Park in Thank an you. MRA. Thank well, you. Dr. Colleen Acock, followed by Stephanie Lord, followed by Dale Perkins. Is that centered where you can see it? I can't see it. That's pretty good. Uh, so I'm going to have to be really quick. I'm sorry. I thought I was going to have two minutes. I'm not. So I guess I'm the national and world informer for the city. Um, I'm sorry I wasn't here. I've been in Scotland I've on, uh, for three weeks. I've been on a 22-hour flight, and I still found it uh, able to be here, so I'm sorry if I'm not uh, coherent, really. But um, I'm sorry I missed Abraham Perez, and, uh, because I did bring him to your attention, our national champion in boxing, and thank you, uh, Councillor Jones, for supporting the boxing in this community and in this state, and I, we really appreciate that. Uh, so now I'm reporting for the High Desert Pipes and Drums. They've been in Albuquerque for 25 years. We just came back from the world competitions for three weeks and competition Saturday. They came in 14th. And there are four divisions. There were 200 bands. They're world acclaimed. 
My son is a competitive bagpipe player, and we're the only one that is allowed to wear the Wallace plaids in Albuquerque by Clan Wallace. There's a lot historic, historically involved in that, uh, and I, maybe you can uh, ask them to come and give you a demonstration of what they do. Uh, it's their 25th anniversary. There was a documentary done on them, and I still want to, everywhere I went, um, I told about this Singing Era Community Center, and everybody in Scotland said, you're kidding me, they don't care about their heritage, they don't care about the Spanish village here, and I wanted to bring to you today probably the only extant, possibly the only extant picture, this is from 1846, of what that village looked like. We've overlaid it with archaeological sites, and that's what the village looks like. Before you voted, I was working on a proposal, and it was all set up. Uh, to do a property exchange with the state. I got the state uh, parks. Everyone was on board. The only person who we needed his signature was Don Harris, and that property was going to be exchanged from Singing Arrow Park to the state's Ponderosa Park. They were all on board. That would be a, become a state park. Don Harris refused to uh, look at that document. Thank you. If you have any Thank questions you. about that, I'd be glad to tell you about that. Our next speaker is Stephanie Cord, followed by Dale Perkins. Mr. Perkins, if you want to come up, followed by Elaine Summerhill. Is she here? Can you raise your hand if you're here? No. Yes, ma'am. Thank you very much for being here tonight. I'm going back to the red flag bill. When we went to the pre-hearing bill at UNM College, I asked a simple question. When you take and confiscate the firearms, how are they going to be treated? because I've got a lot of money in my guns. I've got two guns that's worth 30,000. And I was told by Linda Lopez, they're gonna strive numbers on them. And before you go to the first trial on your 10 days, they'll be destroyed. That automatically, and that's what she said, I was there, she said it to me. That automatically throws a real big red flag up in my face. Now, uh, we want to work with you guys on figuring out how to write the bill where it is protective on both sides. I need to be able to face my accuser. There needs to be a criminal and uh, civil and money against someone that makes a false statement. My ex-wife of 40 years ago, swore up and down that she'd make damn sure that I won't have a firearm ever again. She hasn't been in my life. I don't know where she's at, except for when this bill came up, she called me up and said that she will take them. Thank you very, very much. I appreciate what you guys are doing. Take care. Thank you. Vince DeGregory, and that's assuming uh, Summerhill isn't here. And then followed by Tim McGurvin, followed by Downey X. If you can make your way to the front. Good evening, Madam President, Councilors. My name is Vince DeGregory. I'm the president of the Edo Neighborhood Association Board. And I'm here to express my full support and our board's full support of the resolutions 174 and 175. And we want to thank Councilor Benton for getting that onto the agenda. Uh, these bills, um, or resolutions rather, are supporting uh, increasing the, the Metropolitan Redevelopment Area Plan for Edo and Huning Highlands and the South uh, Martinez Town Districts. And uh, we just want to express our support, so thank you very much for that. And uh, we have also developed a prioritized list that uh, hopefully makes our neighborhoods safer and by adding crosswalks and uh, canopies for the uh, art uh, station and restriping of Broadway, um, different things like that. So we would like to um, have that uh, put in as an amendment to the plan. So thank you very much. Thank you. Tim McGivern, followed by Downey X. Uh, good evening, council members, and uh, thank you all for the work that you do for the city of Albuquerque. I know maybe this is a thankless job sometimes, <laughs> but I really sincerely appreciate everything that you all do. Um, I would just like to reiterate everything that Vince said uh, in support 
um, of the, uh, the East Downtown, Huning Highland, and South Martinez Town portions of the uh, MRA. Um, I am a, uh, a resident of East Downtown and a property owner as well as a board member for the East Downtown Neighborhood Association. And uh, a couple other things that I just wanted to add to what Mr. DeGregory said is that uh, we request that the uh, East Downtown Neighborhood Association uh, prioritize projects list that we have submitted uh, would be incorporated into the city's CIP budget for the next fiscal year, if that could please not be overlooked. And, uh, and also would like to request that the, uh, when the RFPs come out for future potential projects in the new East Downtown, Huning Highland, South Martinez Town designated area, that the, uh, that the uh, MRA be issued expeditiously. Um, we've been working on this literally for decades and really excited to get some more progress made in this area. And, uh, and that finally that, uh, that we would ask that its focus would be on uh, asking our local development professionals for their input on the success. Of the Thank you. Um, Councillor Benton. Yeah, just quickly uh, to make clear, um, I believe the, we'll clarify this when the bill comes up, but the, I think the list, the capital list is, uh, is incorporated into the plan. And um, I certainly want to work with you now going forward on, on the uh, capital, uh, the capital budget. Um, the, um, I have to say that, that this, uh, these plans were expedited at a speed that I've never seen before for a, for an MRA. So I want to thank the, administration for that. We appreciate as well. that a lot. Thank you. Mr. Downey X, followed by Jim Gonzalez, um, followed by Christy. We get a minute and a half, huh? This country in the 20th century has become an American killing field. Since John F. Kennedy's public execution on Friday, November 22nd of 1963, an estimated 1.8 million Americans have lost their lives to a gun. This country killed 40,000 people last uh, people by the use or misuse of guns last year. That's 109.5 lives lost every day. We are killing each other with guns in numbers unheard of in any modern civil society in history that was not at war. By the end of this decade, more than 300,000 men, women, and children will be killed by a gun. Another 430,000 will be maimed and injured. Guns are creating a ca catastrophic health crisis. What we are witnessing is a slow-moving genocide in real time. The modern misinterpretation of the Second Amendment destroys the concept of civil society and the long-enduring premise of Rousseau's social contract. If only, a, if only a gun made you safer with 30 million plus guns out there, we should be the safest country in the world. But this is the big lie. That's the hypocrisy of it all. When you, as a nation, choose a gun over human life, you live in an inverted moral world. Your country has lost its soul. Those incredible death numbers by guns, numbers show that Americans have a depraved indifference toward human life. So yeah, this country is truly becoming an American killing field. Thank you. Jim Gonzalez? Mr. Gonzalez? Christy Hode, followed by Richard Martinez. Good evening, uh, Madam President and Councilors. My name is Christy Hode, and I live at 617 Edith Northeast, and I'm a member of the Board of Directors of the Citizens Information Committee of Martinez Town. On behalf of the spoke our spokesman, Frank Martinez, and the Board of Directors, of the Citizens Information Committee of Martinez Town, the duly recognized Neighborhood Association of South Martinez Town, I offer the following public comments in support of our 19, 174, and 175 sponsored by Councilor Benton. These propositions with their proposed amendments provide an opportunity uh, provide an opportunity to allow property owners in our community, such as the Jackson Wink mixed martial arts academy with tools to expand their facilities and further economic opportunity. 
Also, the MRA designation enhances our ability, our neighborhood's ability in concert with the, with the Albuquerque Housing Authority to renovate our 45-year-old 96 public housing residential units that desperately need renovation. It is our belief that the proposed MRA plan will encourage median and sidewalk landscaping with pedestrian crossings, bicycle routes, and historic features from Central Avenue to Lomas. These efforts will encourage meaningful linkage to the ongoing Garcia developments in the warehouse district and in the downtown core. We urge your support for this significant effort and we thank Councillor Benton for supporting this important local legislation. Thank you. I stand for questions. R Richard Martinez, followed by Geraldine Amato, followed by Stephen Baca. Good evening, Madam President and Councillors. My name is Richard Martinez. Uh, I live in the South Martinez Town neighborhood, and I'm on the Board of Directors for the uh, Citizens Information Committee of Martinez Town. I just want to say on behalf of uh, our spokesman, Frank Martinez, and the Board of Directors, uh, offer the following public uh, comments. Uh, just some thank yous, really. Thank yous to the uh, uh, police department that have instituted the uh, bicycle patrol in the South Martinez Town area. Um, and uh, it's very deeply appreciated. I see them there a lot, uh, just in the past week or so. And it, uh, I think it makes people feel uh, just a lot safer. Um, also, uh, appreciate uh, the ongoing uh, efforts of the Parks and Recreation and Waste Management Departments for taking care of the historic and recreational uh, parks that are in the area there. Uh, I know it's difficult with vandalism, trash, graffiti, illegal drug activity, you know, you name it, that sort of stuff. But they're doing a really, really good job. And also a uh, thanks uh, to uh, everybody that's helped us uh, get the National Park Historic Trail and the Camino Real uh, original route uh, in the neighborhood. We see lots of people from other parts of the world coming to visit. Thank you very much. Thank you, Councillor Benton. I just want to thank Mr. Martinez and Ms. Howe for all your leadership on the on the Citizens Committee and uh, give my regards to Frank Martinez. He's a, he's a monument that has, has really uh, constantly uh, monitored and pushed for a better uh, neighborhood. So thanks to you and to Frank. Uh, thank you. Appreciate it. I'll tell him. We'll tell him. Thank All right. You. Geraldine Amato. Last time I spoke, I was shorted uh, 30 seconds. I'd like to get the full t two minutes, if I may. It's actually, we've- And um, you're, running, you're running time here. I'm asking a question, they're running the time. We've abbreviated to one and a half when minutes When did you officially evening. go to one and a half? I didn't hear that announced tonight. It was announced. When? Oh, when we started I heard two minutes now. when you were announcing no. it, at the no. beginning. No. And you took five seconds off, and I didn't even start talking no, yet on my subject. We're, we're going to start the timer right now. Our comments are really welcomed over here, the public comments. I'm here to attest again that we as a people need to get serious about where we are as a nation. We are under private jurisdiction. Everything that we own, we think we own, is in receivership. And these international banks, the cartels, are going to foreclose on us. While we're asleep and without our guns, we're going to be happy as clams, but not much smarter. We talk about child abuse and other sexual abuse continuously is being publicized, but never is it mentioned that on this coast-to-coast -coast Masonic Lodge, there's ritual sexual assault of children for perverse purpose. That's never discussed. These ritual sexual assaults of children is to break down a child, even to destroy the child's soul, and to have that adult, if an adult remains and doesn't commit suicide or something else, that adult is a part of a broken society. We need to understand who is in control of our lives and who has control of our children, who has control of our information. Every controversy, both sides are controlled by the same people. That's why the core issues are never discussed, whether it's anti-gun or pro-gun, pro-choice or pro-life. Any discussion is limited 
by the people who control our lives and have made us mercenary slaves, every one of us. I get a social insecurity uh, income. I'm a mercenary slave as well. Thank and you. And then I'm being threatened. Thank you. Because our, I'm a conspiracy theorist, our right? Next, thank you. And a doctor you, in that Amato. hospital where I was incarcerated our next speaker wanted to is Mr. shovel Steven me off Baca. to a psych ward. Oh, that's thank not you. something we should talk thank about you. here, is it? You're thank call you, the cops Kathleen. On me. Kathleen You're call Wood. The cops on me now. Kathleen Wood. Thank you, Madam President and City Council persons. I would like to share how I visited Sitting Arrow Park on Saturday. What a sweet spot this was, overlooking the, uh, the city valley. And there dwelt in the, in the midst of the four hills where the Pueblos had their civilization here. And it's an archaeological site. Not only are there markers saying, here are the buildings underneath, um, there's all kinds of um, information. I ran into a, a, a beautiful gal, a Native American, seeking peace and tranquility in the park. And do you realize and understand what is being taken away from the community by Don Harris's proposition to override the MRA, the De Redevelopment Agency, and the mayor in simply usurping a property that is certainly wrong? And archaeological studies need to be done. EDAC at the UNM, the director, Dr. Su Zhang, recommends ground penetrating radar. The drums are beating as to a question of why, Don Harris, would you be intent, despite voices in your own district, to take away their historical parts with the remains of a Pueblo civilization underneath? Who's being served by this kind of power and go ahead? I listened to the transcript after constituents objected here several and exposed the illegalities that he just simply stated next month he's going to pull the permit and then begin the development and no objection occurred from this panel. I'm just asking, um, you know, we can Google Epstein in New Mexico and Richardson, it comes up pretty far. A lot of people are looking in this investigation. Thank you. Thank Please you. resign, um, Councillor Don Sanchez. Harris. Uh, thank you, I don't have a uh, question for you, but I do have a question for our legal team. And my question on the legislation that we passed uh, last week or whenever we voted on this issue, did the council do anything illegal? Uh, uh, President Pena, Councillor Sanchez, uh, no. Thank you. Thank you. Um, our next speaker is uh, Tad Naminsky. And our final speaker this evening is Art Tannenbaum. Thank you for your time, Council President Pena. Uh, when I walked into the Council Services Office this afternoon, I was immediately reminded that politicians and their underlings are extremely unruly and disorderly. Anyhow, I spoke with your assistant, who reluctantly acknowledged that my email marked to your attention late last week has been received. The email about the ongoing ADA non-compliance in Albuquerque Public Transit. The email that includes documentation that ABQ Ride proffered untrue information to the Federal Transit Administration of the United States Department of Transportation regarding ADA compliance, specifically the federally mandated stop announcements in fixed route service. I worked for more than 15 years very intensively and directly with very influential people at the top and very hardworking people at the bottom. I worked with everyone on this, and Albuquerque Transit Department has never satisfactorily been in compliance with the requirements of the ADA. Finally, I, I've got to say that I, I really take exception to the common narrative of there's a bunch of nuts out there. This gives the political establishment the leeway to distract from other shortcomings and, and say, well, there's a bunch of nuts out there. What can we do? I maintain, and I've said this for a year now, there's a bunch of nuts in here. There's nothing crazier than politics. And what we're witnessing now with some of this gun violence is political ideology and politicians uh, 
driving people to create, to cause mass assassination and that sort of thing. Thank you, Mr. Tenenbaum. Uh -huh. So we are now on item 11, announcements. Thank you, sir. You're welcome. Um, there will be an Albuquerque Bernalillo County Water Utility Authority meeting on Wednesday, August 21st at 5 p.m. in the Vincent E. Grego, Grego Chambers. Councilor Davis. There will be an Albuquerque Bernalillo County Government Commission meeting on Thursday, the 22nd at 5 p.m. in these chambers. Councilor Benton. Thank you. There will be a Rail Yards Advisory Board meeting on Thursday, August 29th at 8.30 a.m. in the Council Committee Room on the ninth floor. Thank you. So we are now on item 12, public hearings. We are at AC 19-3, um, South Broadway Neighborhood Association, appeal the decision of the zoning hearing examiner. Mr. Melendez, can you explain? Thank you, Madam appeal? President, Councilors. Uh, AC 19-3, the issue in this appeal is whether light vehicle rentals should be conditionally permitted at an existing gas station um, at Bell and Broadway. The zoning hearing examiner approved the conditional use notwithstanding having that the ZHE found potential adverse impacts to the neighborhood. The council referred this matter to the land use hearing officer on appeal who recommends that the appeal be denied, that the ZHE be affirmed, and that the CUP be approved. The LUHO determined that any adverse impacts could likely be mitigated through conditionals of, of approval, and that appears to be the reason um, that he's recommending affirmance of the zoning hearing examiner. You won't hear from the parties tonight uh, the council's options are to accept the LUHO recommendation and findings, in which case the CUP would be approved. Um, you could accept the LUHO recommendations and adopt different findings, reject that recommendation, or remand to the ZHE. Um, I'll, if you have questions, I'll do my best to help answer those from the record before you. If you feel like you need more information, you may hold a full hearing at a later time. Councilor Benton. Uh, Madam President, I just wanted to ask Mr. Melendez briefly uh, with regard to the there are a lot of similarities to a previous small site where uh, there's question as to whether the site plan that was presented uh, to the ZHE really indicated some of the requirements that exist uh, uh, in the IDO for neighborhood protection. And um, in looking in that, you know, it, it appeared to me that, that that site plan was not adequate for an informed decision by the ZHE, and that's my concern. Madam President, Councilors, there is a site plan in the packet. It's on page 65 of the record. Um, there are requirements use specific to this type of use, um, light vehicle sale and rental. You previously heard a light vehicle proposal that had some similar deficiencies potentially with the site plan. Um, this site plan does not appear to reflect um, specifically on it um, the specific IDEO requirements, um, and, and so that none of those were presented to the ZHE. And I, I will add that when a site plan is approved uh, with this type of approval, it is useful to have an accurate site plan. It helps code enforcement in the event that they need to go out and enforce on any um, deficiencies or issues that weren't previously approved or reviewed. And some of the, thank you, and some of the similar Things, Madam President, uh, uh, that that need to be considered in this kind of case are distances from from a residentially zoned property and so forth. So, uh, uh, Councilors, I, I would like to move a remand to the ZHE, but specifically that the ZHE uh, uh, review and consider an accurate uh, site plan that that shows uh, some of these dimensional standards and and protections that were built into the IDO. So there's a motion and a second um, to remand it back to the, um, to the zoning hearing examiner. Is there any discussion? No? All those in favor say yes. 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 Opposed, no. Motion passes. We are now on B, AC 19-6, Thomas Gully and Hessel Yetema, the third agent for Taylor Ranch Neighborhood Association and surrounding property owners appeal the Environmental Planning Commission. And then do we do them together like we did last time? Madam President, yes, you can. Okay. We'll need two separate motions. Okay. So, and AC 19-7, Thomas Gully and Hessel Yetema, the third 
agent for Taylor Ranch Neighborhood Association surrounding property owners appeal the Environmental Planning Commission. Mr. Melendez. Thank you, Madam President. At your last meeting, you held a full hearing on this matter. It's the uh, development proposal for the pool property on Albuquerque's west side. Um, after that full hearing, the City Council voted to remand this matter back to the Environmental Planning Commission um, for the Environmental Planning Commission to consider issues related to clustering uh, in the context of cluster developments under the IDO and to review open space issues. Um, based on that guidance, council staff prepared draft findings for your consideration tonight. Those were distributed to the parties last week. They all had the opportunity to provide feedback and comment. You have in your packet all of the material that was submitted by those parties. Tonight you will vote to um, adopt findings in support of your remand decision. Um, you have the option of adopting findings as proposed by staff or any combination of other findings that were prepared by parties or findings of your own device. Councilor Sanchez. Uh, thank you, Madam President. Uh, with AC 19-6 and the matter of AC 19-6, I move to adopt the findings as proposed by staff with the additional of a finding proposed by appellant, Thomas Coley, to be numbered finding C3 as follows. On remand, the EPC shall also evaluate, explain an issue, a specified finding as to whether the IDO allows for more than one cluster development on a site plan and with the additional of a finding as proposed by Appellant Taylor Ranch Neighborhood Association to be numbered C4 as follows, the EPC shall conduct the, shall conduct the remand hearing within the scope of these remand instructions as a duly noticed quasi-judicial hearing in conformance with the Open Meetings Act and shall allow all interested persons and the public to submit comments by letter or electronic mail, testify, submit written evidence, present written or oral arguments, and or cross-examine witnesses. There's a motion and a second. So this is moving adoptions of the findings? That is correct. For AC 19-6? That is correct. Okay. So there's a motion and a second on the floor. All those in favor say yes. 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 Opposed, no. Motion passes. Ne um, Councilor Benton. So on the same... We have to do this twice? Yes. Madam President, Councilor Benton, yes. Okay, so, and then I, I, I guess I'll, I'll uh, add a, a additional provision for AC 196. Um, I'm suggesting that Madam President, Councilor Benton, um, you, may, you may place that on 197. The, the vote for 196 has occurred in, unless you want to move to revisit that vote. Okay, I'm sorry, I, I thought we were still on. Well, let's go, I move for reconsideration for AC 19-6. There's a motion and a second for reconsideration. All those in favor, um, Benton said, seconded. All those in favor say yes. Yes. Opposed, no. Motion passes. We're back on AC 196. So, so I would suggest the following sentence be related to the minimum cluster setback requirements be added to finding C1 for purposes of clarification. For purposes of setbacks between clusters, the relevant setback for each cluster shall not overlap. The minimum separation between clusters must include the combination of the relevant setback as applicable to each individual cluster. And this has to do with the distance between the clusters and the whole argument that we can put two of these on one site. I think the intention of the setbacks within the IDO was that these should be, uh, the setbacks should be combined and, and that uh, two clusters should, each cluster should have its own setback. So, so there's a motion and a second um, for the adoption of the findings for A C nineteen six um, as part of the record and as in read into the record by Councilor Sanchez and Betton. All those in favor, say yes. 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 Opposed, no. Motion passes. So, Councilor Sanchez. Uh, thank you, Madam President. Uh, this is A C nineteen seven. In the matter of A C nineteen seven, I move that I move to adopt. The findings is proposed by staff with the additional of a finding proposed by appellant Thomas Gully to be numbered finding C3 as follows. On remand, the EPC shall also evaluate, explain, and issue a specific finding as to whether the IDO allows more than one cluster development on a site plan and with the additional of, and with the addition of a finding as proposed by appellant Taylor Ranch Neighborhood Association to be numbered C4 as follows. The EPC shall conduct 
the remand hearing within the scope of these remand instructions as a duly noticed quasi-judicial hearing in confirmation with the Open Meetings Act and shall allow all interested persons and the public to submit comments by letter or electronic mail, testify, submit written evidence, present written oral, oral arguments, and or cross-examination witnesses. Councilor Benton. And uh, I suggest the following sentence also be added. For purposes of setbacks between clusters, this would be to finding C1. For purposes of setbacks between clusters, the relevant setback for each cluster shall not overlap. The minimum separation between clusters must include the combination of the relevant setback as applicable to each individual cluster. One second that as well, Councilor John. Yes. So there's a, a motion for the um, adoption of findings AC 197 as stated in the record and as read into the record by Councilor Sanchez and Councilor Betton. All those in favor say yes. 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 Opposed, no. Motion passes. We are now on item 13. Approvals, there are none. Madam President. Um, Councilor Benton. My apologies. Um, Chris, I realize, I, and Councilors, I realize there was one uh, additional item that I may have neglected to point out on AC 19.3. Would we need to reconsider that? Madam remand. President, Councilor Benton, um, you've remanded with an instruction. If you'd like to clarify or add an instruction, then you would need to reconsider. I move for reconsideration. I'll second that. So there's a motion and a second for reconsideration of AC 19.6? AC 19.3. AC 19.3. Oh, we're back up here. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> okay. So there's a motion second for reconsideration of um, AC 19.3. All those in favor say yes. 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 Opposed, no. Motion passes. Madam President, uh, my apologies for this. Um, I would like to add one more uh, uh, provision for the ZHE re uh, uh, remand of this, and that is that the ZHE shall limit the approval of the specific request of light vehicle <coughs> rental only as opposed to rentals and sales. I believe uh, the ZHE uh, included sales in this, and, and I don't believe that that is uh, permissive. Madam President, Councilor Benton, so the proposal as requested by the applicant in that particular matter was narrowly for the rental of light vehicles. Um, however, the approval included also sales. Right. And so um, if the ZHE on remand determines that the use should ultimately be approved and the ZHE would retain that discretion, your remand instruction would be that that um, approval be limited to only the proposal before him, which would be light vehicle rental. Or only rental. Yeah. All right. Second that. So there's a motion and a second for AC 19.3 as um, stated in the record and also as um, stated by Councilor Benton. All those in favor say yes. 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 Opposed, no. Motion passes. Thank you. We are complete with approvals. We are now on item 14, final actions. Councilor Sanchez. Uh, thank you, Madam President. This is O-67. That is amending Article 3, Section 3, Article 6, Section 4, and Article 16, Sections 3, 6, 7, 12, and 20 of the Charter. Amending Chapter 2, Article 4, Part 13, ROA 1994, the Fighting of Petition Ordinances and Amending Chapter 2, Article 4, ROA 1994, to add the limitations of seed money and maintenance of uh, campaigns in off-year off -year ordinances. And we also have, I believe, an amendment. No? No amendments? No. So there's a motion and a second. I'll second it. Madam Clerk? I am looking at, uh, it's not 019-67, because I've got an amendment in my packet. Uh, Madam President and Councilor Sanchez, I'm not aware of any amendment. M Madam President and Councilor Sanchez, um, there was a, an amendment that passed at the last meeting, um, okay. and I, it was prepared by the clerk. I think that's the one you might be referring to, so. Okay, that's yeah. fine, because I was looking at the amendment also. Thank you. Any comments from our clerk? Madam President, uh, councilors, this bill has come before you a couple of times. It contains um, a lot of cleanups that were necessary due to the passage of uh, the Local Election Act. Um, if you'd like me to go into any of them, I'm happy to, but um, if not, then that's fine as well. <laughs> Thank you. So, Councilor Sanchez, close. 
Okay, there's a motion and a second for 067. The what? Oh, you have a speaker. Oh, yeah, sorry. Mr. Art Tannenbaum. Nope. Going once, going twice. Mr. Art Tannenbaum. Can you check and see if he's outside? Because I know he has some limitations, so. Okay. Um, well, with that, there's a motion a second for 067 as amended, correct? All those in favor say yes. Yes. Opposed, no. Motion passes. We are now on um, R165, Councilor Sanchez. Uh, thank you, Madam President. This is R-165. That is adopting propositions to be submitted to the voters at the next local election to be held in the city of Albuquerque concerning questions amending Article 2, Sections 2 and 3, Article 4, Sections 4, Article 5, Section 2, and Article 16, Section 3, 4, 6, 7, 8, 10, 12, 15, and 21 of the Albuquerque City Charter and adding Sections 22 to Article 16 of Charter providing the form of the question and the de designation clause for such questions on the ballot. I move a due pass. There's a motion and a second for a due pass of R-165. We have one person signed up to speak, Ms. Uh, Geraldine Amato. Ms. Geraldine Amato. Okay, well with that, are there any questions from the council? No? Councilor Sanchez to close. Urge support. There's a motion and a second for R-165. All those in favor say yes. Yes. Opposed, no. Motion passes. Um, R-180, Councilor Sanchez. Uh, thank you once again, Madam President. This is R-180. That is rescinding R-19-164 and concerning a bond election to be held in the city of Albuquerque at the next regular election on November the 5th of 2019. Submitting to a vote of the qualified electors certain questions for authorizing the issuance of general obligation bonds. I move a due pass. There's a motion and a second for a due pass of R180. Is there anyone signed up to speak? Councillor Davis. Uh, Madam President, just a point of clarification. I know at our last meeting we had an amendment that uh, clarified or added, <coughs> excuse me, the homeless facilities to the language on one of the bonds. I see it's not in this, the write up that way, but I just want to be sure that I recall we passed that provision. Is that right? So, Madam President, Councillor Davis, all of the amendments that were previous, passed on the previous bond resolution have been included here. Great. The only thing that this changes is um, a little bit of language about yeah. the tax impact at the instruction of Bond Council. Thanks so much. Councillor Sanchez to close. Urge support. There's a motion and a second for R-180. All those in favor say yes. 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 Opposed, no. Motion passes. I am going to go back because he is here. Um, we've already passed this, Mr. Tannenbaum, but if you want an opportunity to speak on 067, you're more than welcome to. Thank you very much, Ms. Pena. I was outside making sure Ms. Amato got her ride safely. Thank you for being such a gentleman. Uh, Ken said hi to me today uh, for the second time since I was hauled out of here in November. This is twice now Mr. Sanchez has had an opportunity to apologize, but hasn't. Um, the, uh, about a year ago, no, two years ago, there was a Board of Campaign Practices, Board of Ethics and Campaign Practices hearing about a city council candidate and the seed money and the accompanying paperwork and signatures involved with that. It was a really, uh, really strange meeting. Uh, the chairman of the Board of Ethics and Campaign Practices stated that hearsay was allowed in, in these hearings. I don't know who made the rules for the board. I'm assuming it's the city council. Um, and, and it was wild. It was a wild and crazy hearing. And one of the things that really stood out at the time, and I still, I just can't forget it, uh, the, the city council candidate ended up being fined a substantial amount of money 
for, for the, the errors or problems or fraud or whatever it was. And there was an attorney representing the, the candidate who, who said, my candidate's being singled out. Ken Sanchez did the same thing. Don Harris did the same thing. How come they have, you know, my, my candidate's been singled out. So getting back to the point of crazy politics driving everyone crazy, I'm really hoping that, that uh, politicians will set a better example. You're nuts. You're ruthless, backstabbing, cutthroat, underhanded. This is the way politicians do things. You start out your careers fighting your opponent practically to the death, and you never stop. Thank you. Thank you. Councilor Sanchez, R181. Uh, thank you, Madam President. This is R-181. This is rescinding section one of R-19-66 concerning the election to be held in the city of Albuquerque on November the 5th, 2019, and setting the date of a runoff election for December the 10th of 2019. There's a motion and a second for R-181. Um, Any discussion? Nobody signed up to speak. Uh, Councilor Sanchez. I'd like to just make one comment on this. I want to thank the clerk for her work on this and also I believe that because of the special election or the runoff election would be held a week later on December 17th, uh, people would be getting Christmas cards along with their political <laughs> literature. I think that's somewhat <laughs> problematic, but uh, I think this is a good move and you know, hopefully it'll all work out if there is a runoff election in the city of Albuquerque. So I urge your support. <laughs> There's a motion and a second for R181. All those in favor say yes. 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 Opposed, no. Motion passes. Next item, um, R79, <laughs> Councilor Davis. Oh, that was deferred. Was it? No. Uh, no, I'm sorry. 79 no. is not, so thank you. Madam President, I move uh, to pass on R79, a nuisance substandard dwelling or structure in need of abatement at 113 Eubank uh, Northeast. And I move R79. Thanks. Uh, I know our planning department is here. Mr. Williams is here uh, on a number of these properties. Uh, we've been through this at some length um, through committee, and these are problem properties in this one, for instance, uh, that I think goes back all the way to 2014 with some of its initial violations. And uh, I appreciate very much the planning department and the new administration putting some priorities again back into revitalizing our neighborhoods. Uh, but Madam President, if it's okay, I'd like to have Mr. Brennan just very quickly uh, into the record, explain sort of a history of this property. I like the way you said very quickly. <laughs> understood, understood. Uh, Madam President, uh, as Councillor Davis expressed, uh, this matter has been uh, deemed a substandard building by the Code Enforcement Division since uh, November of 2014. Various attempts have been made to uh, work with the property owner to bring it into compliance. Uh, most recently, uh, a representative for the owner attended a uh, pre-review team meeting with the planning department to discuss uh, what could be done. However, the department has had no contact from the owner since then. Uh, the property has been cleaned and it's been fenced by the owner, uh, but the building is still boarded up. There are approximately um, $8,000 uh, in liens against the property. And over the past 12 months, there have been eight police emergency calls for service to the property and three calls uh, to, the, uh, to AFR uh, regarding calls for service to the property. We'll stand for any questions. Any questions? No? So the fund we were talking about earlier in the evening, has that been offered up as kind of an opportunity for the homeowner? Uh, Madam President, this would be different. Uh, this is a commercial property. Oh, it's commercial. Um, so it, it would be a little bit different than the issues that were discussed with uh, okay. Councilor I didn't realize Gibson. it was commercial, sorry. Councilor Davis. Urge your support. There's a motion and a second for R79. All those in favor say yes. 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 Opposed, no. No. Next item, R152. One more time, Madam President. R152 is a nuisance substandard dwelling or structure in need of abatement in 516 Kentucky Southeast uh, within the city limits of Albuquerque. Uh, I move uh, R152. There's a motion and a second for R-152. Is there any discussion? Um, Mr. Williams? Uh, very quickly, uh, Madam Chair, uh, Madam President, thank you. This is a uh, property that has been worked uh, by our Code Enforcement Division as a substandard building since April of 2016. Uh, since that time, we have received no contact from the owner. 
There is an outstanding lien balance of approximately $24,000. Uh, in the past 12 months, there have been 55 uh, APD calls for service to the property and two calls from AFR to the property. We'll stand for any questions. Any questions? Councilor Davis? Urge your support. There's a motion and a second for R152. All those in favor say yes. 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 Opposed, no. No. Councilor Davis, one, R153. One more, Madam President. R-153 is a nuisance substandard dwelling or structure in need of abatement at 247 Española Northeast. This is one of those that's been around forever, and I'm so happy to see it with us. Uh, I uh, move a passage of 153. Second. There's a motion and a second for R-153. Um, we actually have one person signed up to speak, Mr. Tad Naminsky. Um, so there's motion and a second. All those in favor say yes. Yes. Opposed, no. No. Councilor. One more. Otro. Councilor Davis, R156. Last one, Madam President. R156 is a new substandard dwelling or structure in need of abatement at 8400 Chico Road Northeast uh, within the city limits of Albuquerque. In this case, I believe we did have a owner who began a process of remediation with us and has since abandoned that plan, it appears. And so we're going to, I support the planning department's recommendation to move forward. So I'd move 156. Second. There's a motion and a second um, to pass R156. We have one person signed up to speak, Mr. Miss um, Melinda Bayasa. Um, I have oh, sorry. Um, I've been asked to speak on behalf of the owner um, they just took title to the property on July 30th approximately and they've been working with the city to clean up the property um, they have plans to fence off the property on Wednesday of this week and they're asking if the city will allow them to con um, continue forward and preserving the property and and sell it to a potential buyer that can rehabilitate it um, they did uh, make efforts to immediately secure and maintain the property as soon as they were made uh, aware of issues with the property. Um, thank I'm you, Councilor. Madam Councilor President, Davis. can I follow one follow-up question? Sure. Uh, Ma'am, who is the owner that you're in or the person you're in contact with who it's, you believe to be the owner? It's an asset, ma it's an asset management company called Hudson Homes. And they took... Uh, Speak into the oh, mic I'm just sorry. a little bit. <laughs> They're an asset management company called Hudson Homes, and they're managing the property until sold. So uh, they actually do have potential buyers at this point in time that are interested in rehabbing the property and making it habitable once again. Sure. Madam President, it's okay. I'd just like to ask Mr. Williams if he's familiar with that group or has any recommendation for the council. I know. Mr. Williams. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, Madam President, uh, President Councilor um, Davis, I am not personally familiar with, with the group, uh, nor is our field supervisor that's here with me this evening. Um, you know, compliance is always the ultimate goal of, of right. code enforcement. Um, we would not be opposed if it, if it pleases the council to request a deferral for 30 days. We can report back to you next month as the steps that, that are taken in this process. Um, if it, again, if it pleases the council, uh, we would be amenable to, to entertaining that. And Madam President, with that, if, if there are co-compliance managers willing to, to meet with uh, the new people here tonight and just at least exchange some numbers and give us an update, I'd make a motion to defer for 30 days till second. our September 16 meeting. There's a motion and a second um, to defer for 30 days, R-156. All those in favor say yes. 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 Opposed, no. Motion passes. We are now on um, Councilor Benton, R-174. Thank you, Madam President. R-174 is approving the major expansion of the old Albuquerque High School Metropolitan Redevelopment Area and renaming the expanded area as the East Downtown, Huning Highlands, South Martinez Town, MRA, making certain findings and conclusions pursuant to the Metropolitan Redevelopment Code. I move a due pass. Second. And Madam President, I move the amendment that is in your RPAD, uh, excuse me, in your iPad. Um, <laughs> Uh, our pad that's We've the got new, the new model that's, that's the <laughs> brand new just came out um, so that that is uh, uh, in your in your iPads this is this would be floor amendment number one uh, adding an exhibit a to resolution 19 174 
So there's a motion and a second for floor amendment number one. All those in favor say yes. 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 Opposed, no. Motion passes back on the bill. Uh, Madam President, I'll just say my thank yous uh, for this and the following bill uh, to the administration, the planning department staff, and the metropolitan redevelopment staff, Ms. Iverson specifically. Uh, I think I said before this was record, record time to get an, an MR designation and plan put together. And I think it's partly also due to the three neighborhood associations who uh, worked on this, so I appreciate them as well, uh, as we said before, uh, but I urge your support. Thank you, Councillor Benton. Uh, did sorry you? to interrupt. I'm Madam sorry. Uh, Councillor Benton, there's another three amendments associated with Oh, I um, thought that was, oh, that's right. <laughs> okay. I'm glad you caught me. And also, since I was saying thank yous, I have to say thank you to Ms. Morris. So it's just w going way too fast. So uh, that's right. The uh, uh, amendment labeled B, this would be floor amendment number two, add the attached exhibit B to the resolution. Second. There's a motion and a second for floor amendment number two. All those in favor say yes. Yes. Opposed, no. Motion passes. Councilor Benton. And I will move uh, the amendment labeled C in your package. This would be floor amendment number three. This is uh, revising exhibit A, the boundary, and figure one of exhibit, exhibit B, the designation report, to include the following properties, 210 Arno Northeast and 214 Arno Northeast. Second. There's a motion and second for floor amendment number three. All those in favor say yes. 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 Opposed, no. Motion passes. And Ms. Madam President, I'll move uh, floor amendment number four, which is labeled D in the packet, revise exhibit A, the boundary and figure one of exhibit B, the designation report, to include the following properties, 701 Cold Southeast and 715 Cold Southeast. Second. There's a motion and a second for floor amendment number four. All those in favor say yes. Yes. Opposed, no. Motion passes. We are back on the bill as amended. And I do want to thank Ms. Morris. <laughs> Couldn't do it without her. So <laughs> thank you. All the, uh, and I uh, appreciate and urge your support. Thanks. So there's a motion and second for R-174 as amended. All those in favor say yes. 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 Opposed, no. Motion passes. Um, R-175, Councilor Benton. Thank you, Madam President. I move R-175, this is approving the East Downtown, Huning Highlands, South Martinez Town Metropolitan Redevelopment Area Plan. I move a due pass. Second. There's a motion and second for a due pass. And, Councilor Benton. And again, uh, the packet that is in your, uh, in your iPads, or RPads as the case may be, mm -hmm. uh, I'll move the uh, attachment uh, or the floor amendment labeled A. This would be floor amendment number one. This uh, states on page one, line 11, replace the blank with resolution 19174 and replace exhibit A titled City Council Draft and dated May 10th, 2019 with the attached draft titled City Council Draft red line and dated August 2019. So there's a motion and a second for floor amendment number one. All those in favor say yes. Yes. Opposed, no. Motion passes. And Ma Benton. Madam President, thank you. Uh, I move floor amendment number two. This is labeled B in the packet. And this states, revise the boundaries of the following figures in exhibit A to include properties at 210 Arno Southeast, 214 Arno Northeast, 701 Cole Southeast, and 715 Cole Southeast. Um, figure one, East Downtown, Huning Highland, South Martinez Town area. Figure two, zoning. Figure three, adjacent MR areas. And appendix two, figure one, proposed East Downtown, Huning Highland, South Martinez Town MR area boundary. And this updates uh, figures within exhibit A. There's a motion and a second for floor amendment number two. All those in favor say yes. Yes. Opposed, no. Motion passes. Councilor Benton. Thanks to all those same people I mentioned before, and I urge your support. 
Um, there's more. I'll start. No, Madam President, um, Council Benson, I just wanted to remind you that this one does have to be deferred. Oh, yes. It, okay. The, uh, no. the plan needs two hearings. Okay. Uh, so I'll move a deferral as, amendment, as amended to September 4th. So there's a motion and a second for a deferral to September. September 4th, all those in favor say yes. Yes. Opposed, no. Motion passes. Well, um, that's exciting to see all these MRA areas um, expanding, but we're gonna have to fight for some dollars. <laughs> so there be no further business. This city council meeting is adjourned. Thank you, everyone.